Okay, in this video, we're going to walk you through how to take uh, the part that was just created in the CAD sessions video tutorial and set it up as a multi view drawing in Onshape. So, to set up your drawing file, you're going to come down to the bottom uh, left of your screen where it says insert new element uh, when you mouse over that plus symbol, left click, and then slide up to find create drawing. Left click on create drawing, and the dialog box pops up. Uh, that uh, allows you to select different template files, custom templates. Uh, what we're going to do right now is this ANSI A inch, which can also be found underneath of the ANSI tab here at the top. Uh, ANSI A inch on shape drawing templates. We're going to go ahead and utilize this template for our drawing. And then we'll come down here and hit OK. Left click on OK. Now on shape will go ahead and create that drawing uh, sheet for us. Once it does this, this select part or assembly uh, dialog is automatically open for us. If this does not open or you lose this and somehow you hit the X or hit the X here, that's coming from this button on the ribbon bar where it says insert view. Again, very similar to Inventor. Uh, if I left click on that, you have this insert view um, dialog pop back up. And if I were to hit click insert, again, we pull back up that same select part or assembly um, selection box. So this is the part that I want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Immediately brings up a view uh, that I could then start as my front view. Uh, this is not the actual view that I want for my front, even though it says front. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to toggle through these view orientations uh, to see which one is the front view that I'm, I'm looking for. So back, let's go down here to bottom. And the bottom is the actual view I want to use as my front in my uh, orthographic projection or multi-view drawing. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and then left click. That places the view on the sheet and then it's already set up for projection. So I will come up to the top position and I will left click again. What that does is it drops that top view in position and then what I can do is I can start setting up what would be my next projection uh, and then I will then go ahead and select on the um, front view and then move over here to where the right side view would be, and then I will left click again. That's going to set up my three drawings, my front, my right, and my top. Now, if at any point in time uh, you want to exit out of the, the command you're in, you hit escape on the keyboard, and that gets you out of that particular command. If you need to change or reset uh, a view, if you left click and hit delete on the keyboard, you can come back up here to this projection uh, tab on the ribbon bar, select it, select the view that you want to project from, and then move to the area that you want to project the view to. Then I left click and it creates the view for me. Now, unlike Inventor, uh, as a default setting so far, uh, uh, Onshape does not create hidden lines. So simply we need to mouse over top of a view. Well, first let me hit escape twice to get out of my uh, projection command here. And I can left click on a view, right click, and then I should have a dialog pop up, uh, right click options, and go to the top, it says show hidden lines. So I can go ahead and select that, and you can see the hidden lines show up here for the center hole. So I'm just going to work my way around here and do the same thing for all of these. I'm going to select and then show hidden lines, and then I'll come over to the uh, right side and show hidden lines as well. And I should see some, some lines popping up here also. So I'm going to do this again, right click, and here it actually, there's show hidden lines, select that, and they should pop up, there they are. So there's the hidden lines uh, showing up for this particular part. So given the fact that this is all set and in position here, uh, I'm now ready to go ahead and create uh, some dimensions, some annotation. So the first thing that I need to do with any type of annotation is go ahead and set up my center marks and my center lines. This is all coming from, this is my annotation bar here for my center lines. This is my two-point center line. This is a bisector or edge-to-edge -edge center line. Uh, and then, of course, center mark tool. So I'm going to grab that center mark tool first. And again, I'm going to grab my circles first to set up my center marks. I'm going to grab a circle to set up a center mark. Um, now, these are not extending out past the edge of the object yet. Still trying to figure out how to make all that set, but we'll get there. Um, then we'll go ahead and uh, continue to select the center line. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, center point on that object, end of the object, and grab the center point on the other end of the object. 
to create that center line because this is a uh, line of symmetry for this particular part. So I'm now just going to go ahead and create a few simple dimensions on this part. The dimension tool is uh, over here underneath of the name. I will just pull that down to show you a few different types of dimensions that are available. Uh, two point line dimension, but so you select the dimension tool, grab one portion or one line, grab the other line on the other side that you want to get a linear dimension to, pull the dimension into position, and then left click to drop the dimension. Um, so fairly simple way to go about dimensioning. Uh, what I'd like you guys to be able to do is to add some simple dimensions uh, to your part. Uh, remembering as much as you can regarding um, dimensioning um, that we've gone through where uh, holes are going to be diameters uh, and so forth and so on. This really is a getting used to uh, this CAD program more than anything. So I'm not looking to grade dimensions. I want to see that you've been able to go through and make a part. As you can see, I've gone ahead and added a few uh, additional dimensions here uh, to get this uh, dimension a little more. And um, I had to mess through a few things to work my way through how to get it to happen. Um, and given your background in Inventor, you should be able to be able to do that utilizing this dimension tool. Um, play around with it. Take some time and look at that. Then we're going to go ahead and just export this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and export this drawing file. Uh, that occurs down here at the bottom tab where you right click on that drawing one and then hit the export button. Once this exports, this is going to be your file name. And I'm just going to call this uh, getting started. My getting started part. I want to export this as a PDF so that I can submit that. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and hit export. That's going to go ahead and download um, a PDF from my browser. I have my uh, browser and my computer set up to automatically open up PDFs. If you do not have it set up to automatically open PDFs, what you might need to do is go into your browser and be able to then go find your downloads. Um, access my download file. I would select my Windows file button here at the bottom of my screen. Slide over to find my downloads uh, button here for downloads. You can also get this through your this PC as well. Depends upon where you are. Uh, hit your downloads and then there's my getting started part right here so either way if I can do it this way and then open that up with Adobe Acrobat there is your uh, download file then you can go ahead and save this uh, in any way you want uh, to anywhere you want but it's really not necessary because at this point you're ready to go ahead and upload that file so hopefully you're able to uh, work through a little bit of this orientation uh, with Onshape as we are going to embark on a new CAD program for uh, the rest of the year here.